So now we're starting to see some serious customization within our design using the startup framework. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the content sections and do some custom styling on those as well. So here in our project, we have the content three section open. And there's one little markup change I wanna make. Where we have a div with a class container, we're gonna change that to container top. And then right below that, we'll add another div and that'll have a class and container. And then right down here, we'll add a div. And all this does is allow us to declaratively show which is our top container. So in our styles.less, we'll start declaring styles for our container three. So we'll target our container three and we're gonna change some padding on it. So we'll set some padding top to zero and we're gonna set padding bottom to 68 pixels. And from here, we're gonna set container top and we're gonna change its background color. Its background color is going to be E8F0F1. And we're gonna change the padding top to 123 pixels and the padding bottom to 90 pixels. And sorry, instead of container three, it's content three. And one of the things we're gonna to wanna to do inside content three is add our own custom image. So let's go to index.html. Instead of this ticket green right here, let's change this to our own custom image. So we'll select the source to change it. And we'll change this to images slash icon dash content dot PNG. We'll change its width to 214 and its height to 214 as well. So in the browser, we can see that we have our new background as well as our new image as well. But when we scroll down, we have this bit of an awkward space. So we need to fix that. So within content three, we're gonna target the delimiter. And within the delimiter, we'll set the margin top to zero and we'll change its padding top to 55 pixels. And now we'll go and style the features. We'll target the H6s. We'll set the margin bottom to 17 pixels. So our content three is looking pretty good, but there's a bit of an issue down here with our features. There's this awkward space over here to the right. So we wanna actually increase the size of one of these features. So within our features section, we have a call small three throughout. So instead of having a call small three throughout, we'll change the middle one to call small four. And now we can see that this takes up the space a little bit more evenly. So now that we have that taken care of, let's check out to see how it responds. And from our initial checking in the browser, we can see that it responds pretty well and we'll emulate it on iPhone. And we can see that it looks pretty much the same on an iPhone as well. So now let's focus on this world of baseball. We do wanna keep the square that says world of baseball, but we wanna change this into our own custom image asset. So let's focus on changing this background. So below content three, we'll set a style for content 23. And within content 23, this is where we'll set our background image. And the name of this is contentbg.jpg. And within here, we're actually going to, want to target the hero unit inside that has a class of hero unit bordered. And then we're gonna to want to select the H1. We're gonna give that a font weight of bold and we're gonna give it a media query because we wanna make sure that when the page resizes, that the font resizes accurately as well. So we'll have a media query with a mid width of 767 pixels, and we'll change the font size to 50 pixels. So let's scroll down our page, and we can see that we have this pretty awesome image of a baseball lying on a baseball field. So let's try resizing it. So when it's resized in the browser, we can see that our text responds appropriately. We'll emulate it on iPhone, and we can see that it looks very similar there as well. So this image looks really good. And when we scroll down, we can see where it says buy baseball app for $4.99. That looks kind of out of place. So let's change that to work within our design. So below content 23, we'll set styles for content 12. We'll change the BTN wide class, and we'll set its background color to 2A. We'll change its font size to 30 pixels and we'll change the padding top to 47 pixels as well as the padding bottom. And then we'll also set a hover state. We'll set the background color of the hover states to twos all across the board. And then we're gonna add some transitions. 
So the first one we're going to add is a WebKit dash transition, and that's for 0.25 seconds. And then we're also going to set the other vendor prefixes as well as the CSS3 property. So now we'll scroll down to our content 12 and we can see we have that nice black color. And then when we hover over it, we can see we get that nice transition. So, so far through this page, it's looking pretty solid. And now as we scroll to the bottom, we can see that we're having a bit of issue with the footer because the footer doesn't really blend into our application. So in the next tutorial, we'll focus on setting up this footer. And also, we're going to focus on adding some parallax to some of the images, as well as adding our own custom font through Typekit. So just like always, I'm David East. If you have any questions or want something explained in more detail, just leave a comment or send me a tweet.